Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We continue our summer fix of football for you and our Legend series. We're in Paisley uh, for the legend. It is, of course, St Mirren's Tony Fitzpatrick that joins us on the couch and delighted to have Tony with us, uh, Ruffy, because uh, when you think of St Mirren, uh, certainly over the last uh, 40 years, the name Tony Fitzpatrick immediately comes to mind. Yep, and that's why he's on the couch. <laughs> He's uh, another St Mirren legend and uh, we obviously had Mac on as well and uh, it was just a fantastic side then, wasn't it? Yeah. It really side. was, Alan, yeah. I was very fortunate to play with, you look at, I'm scared to mention because I missed somebody out, but yeah, you're right. And I mean, through the McAvenies, McDougals, Peter Weirs, Billy Starks, Doug Somers, no, there's Frank McGarvey. No, when you look at, when you get through all these players, Stevie Clark went to Chelsea, you know, and there's many more. Yeah, uh, but it's um, yeah, it was it was a special time in St Mirren at that time, and it all started with a great man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you forgot my favourite player, uh, Ian Scanlon. Did oh, Scanlon was different class. <laughs> he was probably the best one-to-one -one player. I know Danny McGrain. When I speak to Danny, and he always denies it, but. Ian Scanlon, it was the only player I've ever witnessed giving Danny McGreen a real hard time yet, and that's saying something. But uh, Scan could be MD in his day. Incredible yeah. player. Magic. I mean, you just rhymed off so many great players there. Um, we've got lots to talk about. Uh, of course, the, the one thing about your career, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch, I think is quite heartwarming, quite inspirational, Tony. Um, but when you started out, Postle Park, what a great grounding for you. Great what a great grounding for you. Fantastic. And it was, to be honest, uh, Postle's... Uh, it was funny enough, I was at Saracen Primary, primary last <coughs> night uh, in the heart of Postle, and it was great memories again just walking about there. Uh, my family still, a lot of them still stay there. But for me personally, I think it's... No, in that area, Porso, myself, but there was uh, the Milton area, Springburn again, the McAvenies, McDougals, we, we all came for that, to Chick Charnley, we were all in that sort of area, uh, within sort of so many yards of each other really, so it's been incredible. But a lot of good people mm. there, did you get a sense and do you still get a sense of tremendous pride that one of their own yeah. has achieved? Definitely, because it is, it's, it's when you look at, there is a lot of poverty there. Uh, and uh, Pozzo in these areas, and uh, if someday it's one to you stay there, um, the people really want people to do well. Believe it or not, I mean, and if you do happen to go to, you're either going to be a football player, a boxer, or you take the other route, <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> who can judge MD? Yeah. Because, uh, but it's, it's you're right that the, the sort of uh, the warm to you, and, and still to this day, it's great when you go back up to Pozzo and. Uh, the, the grannies and the, mm -hmm. the grandfathers remember but you. But that bit. era, as you were talking about, Posso, yeah. you had Harmony Row, yeah. you had Easter Craigs, yeah. you know, I, I played with Sight Hill, that's and, true, they were you know, and, uh, as well. All, all areas that were significant, you know, that's all they lived for was football. I mean, I, I know if you remember as well, Harmony Row had 50 pitches. I know, I played there. The 50 the pitches, 50 pitches. And every morning there was yeah. 50 Games getting well, played every right. morning and in the afternoon as well. It was right, incredible. Alan, and Porso IM, no, we had uh, Tor Street, Cluston Street. Uh, but the guy I've got to mention with Porso IM is Bobby Dinney, was who started all this. And Bobby's got the MB or OB, but he definitely um, he's like a second father to us all, and he's still alive to this day, Bobby. But he's an incredible, uh, in so many players, for Bobby Russell's and Kenny Dalglish, he's even spent a time there. Uh, again, so many great players there. Uh, but Bob, Bobby Denny was just a real uh, fantastic man. Yeah, I, I've got to ask you, how close were you, you know, when you come to that choice, when you, you, you get a chance where you've got a football ability, but how close were you to taking the wrong road? Was that a, was that a possibility? Yeah, very close, if I'm being honest, Peter. As I say, when you grow up in the scheme uh, like that, and there's, there is a lot of violence there, um, even, as you say, we didn't look at it. I work with sort of young people who knew her and disengaged, and they call them gangs, and they call them... We were the same in Porso. We never thought of ourselves as a gang, but you, you hung about <laughs> with a lot of people. There was a lot of violent youngsters there. You could quite easily, um, and yes, if I'm being honest, I could have. I hung about with the gangs at the time, but just something, I preferred playing football. Yeah. So 
and just again Bobby Denny's people like that sort of guided you the other way but it would, it would have been so easy to go the other way. Yeah, absolutely. I, if there's what you could never have been in a gang, rough. <laughs> no, I, 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 no well, I, I was fortunate enough. I, I was in Knightswood. I was in the posh area <laughs> of Knightswood, but we had Drum Chapel yeah, up there, oh, yeah. and Temple yeah. around the corner. Ah, well, so we were sort of a caught in the caught middle. In the but middle, I remember yeah. clearly what you're saying. It was an era where gangs were rife. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not just our area, you know, and no. you'd be playing football and they'd all be kicking lumps at each other in the corner and then coming down and, and meeting up. So yeah. football was. The, the avenue to keep away from it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, did you find it difficult going to train wear, dressed as a woman? <laughs> 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 I used to just hang about up trees. To them. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <totally> <laughs> gone. And everybody had went away. <laughs> oh, oh dear. I mean, as far as, uh, as, far as the, the, the playing is concerned, obviously you get involved there um, playing football. Was there, a, was there a point where you thought, Game on here, somebody's looking at me, I've got a chance. Yeah, well, I said there was a story, like, say, I was training with St Mern uh, twice a week, because both of them, the nursery was Aston Villa, and any kid that showed anything at all was taken down to Aston Villa. So happened, I was, I was, I was struggling in the days, to be honest, in the postal team, because you had really good players, and I was very small, you wouldn't think so now, but I was very frail, so... Joe Hill was the sort of leading scout at Aston Villa and he sort of put me at St Mern just to train Tuesday and Thursday because we're second bottom in the second division, they were yeah. a part-time team. <clears throat> and uh, what what happened was uh, we all went down to play uh, as, before an Aston Villa Birmingham game, Post OIM played their, their youth club and there was 50,000 people in the, the, the stadium and we played in that, long story short, I must have done okay in it because Villa then, when I was sort of like 15, took me down for the final month to say, this is it, no, that you will we'll give you a contract yeah. and uh, an apprenticeship and stuff like that. So the scheme was buzzing, of course, at 15, no, and my mum and dad, the whole scheme everywhere you went, Tony's signing for Aston Villa, she's fantastic. <laughs> mm -hmm. But after the month, the, the manager took us in with the coaches and said I, I wasn't good enough. I wouldn't be, would never be a professional footballer. I was too small, too frail, and definitely would never uh, play in England. But to go back up the road and get myself a trade, uh, and I was shattered. And of course, when you go back up to the, the scheme, yeah. you no, know, your pal slaughter you. But I seen a big difference in my family as well, my mum and dad. And it was it was hard because you are you're a failure. You feel a failure. Yeah. And that's how I feel for so many young kids now. You know, getting and it's getting younger and younger. I was told at 15. Yeah. You no know, kids now are getting told at eight. They're no good enough, yeah. which is crazy. And did you find, though, that... Uh, I mean, we can see a, a great young picture of you there mm. in the early days with St Mirren, but what um, inspired you to show some kind of mental strength to bounce back from that? Well, just after... I'll be honest with you, this is a, a personal story. Just after I got... I was 15 and a half or so, um, just after I got refused with Aston Villa, I came up the road and... Uh, Three weeks later, a month later, um, there was a lot of girls and boys who ran about the gangs. And uh, Elizabeth, who I went with for eight years old, uh, she fell pregnant. So I got married at 16. Wow. Uh, and so that, uh, and that, when you ask who sort of, Alec Ferguson changed my life, to be honest, because I was, when I got married at 16, I was working as a say painter, but I was just painting big bits of wood all day. Yeah. And uh, Willie Todd, who was a great chairman at St Mum at that time, just sort of gave us that trade. But I was going <clears> to leave football completely because I was getting nowhere. Alec had just come in as manager. And, uh, of course, you'd heard so many things about him and no fee sterling just for that few months he was there. So what had happened was Elizabeth was going to go back to her family because I was giving her such a hard time because I wasn't getting on at my football. Um, I just wanted to be a footballer, but it wasn't happening for me. And I gave her a real hard time. So she was going to leave me and go back where my daughter was born at this time, Lorraine. And it was Alec Ferguson who uh, I told... I managed to convince Lisbeth to stay because I was chucking football together. And, she, and we went into the meeting on a Tuesday night. You know, like I sit in a dress room. And I always remember Ricky McFarlane, who was Alec Ferguson's number two, coming into that dress room. There was guys there. I was... 16 and a half, not for 17. There was guys there at 30 that had played. 
And Ricky says, Tony the gaffer wants you up the stair. I was the first one up. Wow. And I thought, <coughs> here we go. I'm, I'm out. No, yeah. he's going to tell me I'm too wee, I'm too thin, all these things. Well, see before you keep Finish, it. Finish, yeah. Keep it. Yeah. Because right after the break, <laughs> Ruffy, we're going to find out <laughs> what Fergie said to yeah. him. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't <laughs> believe he's a bird at 16. <laughs> 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 That's another one where there was one, wasn't it? <laughs> that was it. We'll find out after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, the Legends series. Hopefully you're enjoying some of the legends we have on the couch talking about their career. Uh, and of course, this, it, it feels like a thriller, Ruffy, because <laughs> you know we had a little teaser just before the break. <laughs> now we're into the big meeting. Tony Fitzpatrick up to see Fergie, as he was known then, the St Mirren manager. And uh, Tony, what happened? Yeah, as I say... Before I went up the stairs, I sort of swithered well to run out the front door, to be <laughs> honest, because I thought I'm not going to go up and get told and back down to all the boys as a failure again. But luckily, Ricky came and said, Tony, come up to the gaffer once. So I've ran up and I've chapped the door, and of course, the voice, I can't do his voice, but yeah. he's opened the door, he was sitting there, and phew, I was panicking. But in my head, I'd said, because <clears throat> I'd promised Elizabeth what I was chucking football all together, yeah. and I thought, I was, I was wanting to say to him, look, I'm chucking it, but I couldn't get it out. And he says, come and sit down. And uh, I seen a big set of keys beside him. <laughs> so I thought, he's just going to launch these at me or whatever. <laughs> uh, but he never, he, he sat me down. And that that next couple of minutes changed my life completely. Wow. Was when he looked at me, and I, again, I was in this sort of daze, because he was a fearsome guy as well. No, you had real, real respect for him. And he just, uh, sorry for pointing at you, Peter, but I'll tell you what he did. He just went, uh, I've been watching you very closely over this period of time. And I thought, oh, here we go. <laughs> and he says, and do you know something? You've got great potential. Like this football club, like St Mung. He says, in five years' time, not only will we be challenging Celtic Rangers, we'll be above Celtic Rangers. You'll be in Europe, we'll be doing this, we'll be doing that. And I was, and he says, and I want you to be my captain. And I was sort of in shock, and he says, do you believe this? And of course, <laughs> aye. And oh, he says, right. right, come with me. And he took us down the stair into the dressing room and done this talk to everybody, introduced me as a new captain, and then he said he would speak to everybody individually, which he did. Uh, but that, uh, but you can imagine, I'm in such a high, yeah. but I've told Elizabeth the only reason she stayed because I was saying I was stopping football, you know, and concentrating on her. But I went home and I, I sort of I must have been such a high that my energy and what it was about, and she would just always remember a cuddling and saying, right, come on, we'll get together and get this. You need to start eating properly, you need to do all these things. And uh, so the man, the great man changed my life and oh. a lot of it did start to happen, what he said. I, I wish I'd met Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> if you met him, the new. We could have started eating properly. Yeah, yeah, Why did I meet him at 15? Uh, uh, that's a brilliant, I mean, it's a brilliant tale because so many people, uh, and as we can see, you're there and he's, he's back oh, with you yes. in, later, in later life. Yeah. But so many people, um, you know, talk about Fergie and his attributes and his attention to detail and, of course, his attention to individuals, yeah. you know, from kids right through. And at that moment there, it's great that you remember that. Um, when, you but when you got into that side, you're the captain. Yeah. What was it like? What I mean, did you sense that he was actually going to fulfil what he was suggesting to you? There was always something there, and you wish you know knew what it was. But I think it was attention to detail, great passion. You no, know, he was really his driving force. Um, yes, there was something about this guy, even tactically. You no, know, and he knew he as an individual. He knew what made you tick. He knew what made McGarvey tick and Starkey, all the different ones, and he would just say the right things to you at the right time and uh, he had this great passion about him uh, and he treated you like a captain to be fair as well he, although I was 17 or yeah. so but I can uh, remember your side I mean, uh, I mean St Mirren had a really yeah, good team did, well yeah. I'm saying that I can appreciate what he's saying about Sir Alec I mean everybody says the inspiration's and, there but let's not kid ourselves on I just, just touched on it there the now quality players 
quality players at the beginning of their careers to become, as you've just identified, better yeah. later on and going on to bigger, bigger, yeah. bigger clubs. Yeah, and he's done that. And he, you know, he left St Mirren and then he went to Aberdeen, who had tremendous players there at the time as well. But he always, he always had this um, gift or whatever you want to call it, just to to really get the best out of you, to drive you forward. Uh, probably he filled his, and I'm not saying this in a big-headed way because there was so many players, but he, he filled his teams with people with his mental attitude, hopefully. Maybe no one's going to be as ever great as him, yeah. but with that type of drive, and, and that's what he, I've noticed, because there's times even with Aberdeen, Man United, when he, he let great players go, you would go... Yeah. Oh God, he's made a mistake this time, but he never. It's no. a great point you make because, apart from anything mm. else, you have to have the mental attitude so that he would admire that in you. And he always had, he always had a few rockets in his side as well. Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he did. Yeah. I mean, to discipline them, but they had the talent. Yeah, yeah but he knew how to handle them. That was the Definitely. man management side. You Definitely. know, it didn't matter what club he was at. You know, he had them. I mean, yeah. you can take Roy Keane into that category, who, who at times would go off the rails, but he always seemed to have the ability. You know, to keep them all in check, you know, and handle yeah. them in their own way. I think, you know, he's a father figure as well, and I think that's important. And, and I think with, it, with football, we, all, we always talk about this, but he did really care for you and love you. And you felt that. Yeah. And he loved the place where he worked. And I mean, Paisley in the days, I'm talking about some men here, I've never really experienced it since the Fergie days. I know winning the cup and winning all the, uh, which has been great, and we were in Europe some men. But see that period with Alec Ferguson, we lived off of that for 10, 12 years after, but this youth set up he'd stuck in. But the people up Paisley, uh, was, it was incredible. You know, we were getting crowds there. I remember going to Motherwell in a cup tie and going through there, and there was 28,000 or so, and they trying to get through for Paisley. People like, oh, and I mean, seriously, and I mean, we'd go around Fergie in the days, uh, we'd, in a van with it, myself and some of the players, and go to the schemes like Fergusley Fox Bar, getting right in amongst the people and getting them a real pride about that team. Yeah. And it was an incredible place to be at that time. What was your favourite time? I mean, you had two spells at St Mirren. The first time around with Fergie, yeah. um, you know, I, I certainly got a sense when we spoke to Frank McAvenny, you know, he, he jokes about it with people saying, you know, St Mirren were playing in Europe. Yeah. I mean, I think, and we all see what Fergie's went on to, He'd, whether I'd have been part of that, I, I don't know, but St Mirren was going to build what he'd done at Aberdeen. Whatever team he was at was going to be at, he, he would, that's his demand. Uh, my favourite time was probably the Fergie, I'll be honest with you, although I played for 10, 12 years after that with St Mirren as well. And, uh, but Fergie's time, as I say, maybe, maybe it was because I was younger, I don't know, but it was just, honestly, you just felt fantastic about the, the place and the, you know, when you went to uh, Celtic and Rangers uh, when we sat in the dressing room you just used to look about that dressing room and think we've got a real chance today yeah. you no know, under the when you had the fair we, we did we went to Parkhead and won went to Ibrox and won under Alec that was a big thing for him to to do that and can I ask you was there a specific game that you played in in that period of time yeah. where you looked at the team around you and thought uh, oh this is, you know, <laughs> we are at the top of our game. Yeah, as I say, the two, I can mention Celtic and Rangers, but Dundee United had a fantastic team at that time with the Sturrocks, Nerys, sort of Graham Pitt. Oh, no, you could go through their team, they were magnificent. And we got them in the cup and we beat them 4-1 at Love Street. And that day uh, was incredible. No, and I just, as you say, before the game I looked about and I thought, we've got a chance, but... One of the days, everything just went right, and we beat them. And after the game, you're sitting, and you see these great players, not as Sturrocks, and and uh, you think, no, we've got something special here. Is there a particular player that you thoroughly enjoyed playing alongside you that you just thought this is a joy? I mean, the midfield. I was very fortunate when I played with Billy Stark, Billy Abercrombie, and uh, Lex Richardson. He was magnificent, Lex Richardson, very underrated, probably one of the best midfields in Scotland. Uh, Peter Weir, when we've all switched about, Peter Weir was wide left. You know, when you think of these players, and Alan played with big Dougie Somner, so with strikers like Somner, McAvenny, McDougals, you, know, you think of these, they call it McGarvey. You know, Brian Gallagher was a name for the past, mm -hmm. we all got a hat trick in Europe. You no, know, 
And again, I'm sorry if I miss him do it, but you're sitting here <laughs> trying to think, hey, yeah. but there was St Mirren at that spell, and, you, and Fergie started it, but you've got to give uh, Jim Clooney come in, but Ricky McFarlane was a, a magnificent manager. No, he worked under Alec at first and then took over and built the team through the years as well. And then Alec Miller came in, Alec Smith. But um, I keep going back to that, uh, that that sort of team at that time with Fergie's team. No, there was a real hunger about it as well. No, and the way they try to play. No, they uh, always encourage you. You had a system to play in. But he allowed you the freedom to go and play, and how many teams do that now? No, well, I was just mm -hmm. going to say, Rob. I mean, <clears throat> uh, great tales from uh, the Fergie years. I mean, obviously we'll have you on tomorrow night as well, Tony, when we get a chance to talk about, of course, that famous Scottish Cup win. But uh, great tales of the Fergie years. Yeah, and uh, it was a great time. You know, he's already touched on the crowds that were there, and I think yeah. that's we we all love playing in front of a big crowds. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, Tony Fitzpatrick is our uh, legends guest. Hopefully, if you're a St Mirren fan or a football lover, you're enjoying the chat. There's more of it on tomorrow night's program. Uh, more chat, and of course that cup win to come as well.